On August 26, the U.S. Supreme Court once again issued an opinion on the Center for Disease Control's eviction moratorium. This time, the court said the moratorium must end. It was just two months ago, on June 29th, that the court agreed to keep the CDC's eviction moratorium in place through the expiration date of July 31st. Once it expired, the CDC actually issued a new order that was to take effect immediately and stay in effect until early October. The intent was to identify individuals in counties with high community transmission of the virus and have the order apply to them. Well, right now, that's about 92% of counties across the nation. The intent was to protect the individuals facing eviction, allow more time for people to get vaccinated, and allow more time for landlords to claim the federal relief dollars that they were owed. Very few of the billions of dollars have actually reached landlords. The timing of getting tenants to stay in their home and landlords their money has now been cut short as the Supreme Court issued its decision, a 6-3 ruling, an unsigned eight-page opinion. The statement from the court was largely similar to some of the arguments they made back in June that the CDC exceeded its authority in imposing a nationwide moratorium on evictions. Now, a lower court had said that and then put a hold on its ruling while higher courts took a look. So really what the Supreme Court did was vacate the state. They got rid of the hold so that lower court order could take effect. And that really is the consequence of ending the nationwide eviction moratorium. There was a dissenting opinion. Like we said, this was 6-3. The three justices that dissented uh, had an opinion that was written by Justice Breyer. He thought the court's ruling was a little hasty. The dissenting justices reminded us of the rules of the court, saying that procedurally we can't vacate a stay entered by a lower court unless we think that lower court clearly made an error. And he said there wasn't the investigation to find that error in this instance. The justices also argued that the statute, the Public Health Services Act, that the CDC relied upon in issuing their order, their eviction moratorium, did indeed grant the authority that the CDC said that they had. So there were differences of opinion coming from these dissenting justices. Now, there was a little chatter about this opinion anyway. It was issued very late at night, and the court's not even hearing arguments right now. What happened was an emergency matter. The Supreme Court decided this was an emergency and that they would decide it right away. That sometimes means that they don't follow the same procedures that they would normally. So they don't do full briefings or arguments or even provide detailed explanations of the decisions that they reach. It's often considered hasty, as Justice Breyer had said. Lower courts may even still be addressing some of the issues at play and might still be learning of the evidence. So it sometimes feels like it jumps the gun. They are often irreversible decisions and the opinions are unsigned, like we saw here. These types of decisions have been criticized procedurally. Never mind what the issue at hand is, like the eviction moratorium, procedurally, Legal experts on both sides of the political aisle say this type of decision making is too secretive, it's too fast, it's an improper use of the court's power. That's an important side note to note on this particular case. People get riled up politically about these decisions, but we also see other people saying the court should even be deciding in this manner in the first place. So let's talk about what the White House said. The White House said, of course, they were disappointed, especially as confirmed cases of the Delta variant are significant and rising across the country. In a statement, the White House said, as a result of this ruling, families will face the painful impact of evictions and communities across the country will face greater risk of exposure to COVID-19. The administration urges all entities that can prevent evictions to act and to do so without delay. Cities, states, local courts, landlords, cabinet agencies should all take some action. The court's decision has an impact on renters. The White House did repeat that this puts hundreds of thousands of tenants at risk of losing shelter, all while state, local, and federal actors are trying to get that federal relief money into the right hands. Some states and localities have their own eviction moratoriums. New York and California may still have eviction moratoriums in place. In other instances, the courts are stepping in. The U.S. Department of Justice has actually encouraged local courts to delay eviction cases so tenants have enough time to receive the relief funds that they can pass on to their landlords. Other courts are requiring landlords to apply for rental assistance and complete mediation before uh, they file to evict a tenant. 
It's not too late if you are a tenant to ask for rental assistance money and to work with your landlord to make sure that the bills can get paid and you can stay in your home. In the description below, we give you some resources of how to find rental assistance near you. We also link to the decision coming from the U.S. Supreme Court.